Welcome to What a Doll Podcast, a podcast where life is plastic and fantastic. Each episode, we bring you doll news, opinions, retrospectives, and guests. So join us as we discuss and share our love for dolls with fans everywhere. Welcome back, doll fans, to another episode of What a Doll, a podcast that celebrates love for all things doll and toy related. We're here today with a very special guest. You might say a very special guest. <laughs> we have the one and only Muriel Farian, the designer of Strawberry Shortcake. Welcome to the show, Muriel. Thank you for inviting me. We were chatting just a little bit earlier about your amazing Instagram that you've ah. reached 15,000 followers on now. Okay, I think, yeah. And it's now at, um, and then that was like two days ago, and now it's 15,039 people or something like that. But who's counting? I always, <laughs> I, love, I love counting, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's let's do this, you know, let's, let's reach 15K. Um, so the people that follow me, Definitely ones that, were, you know, collected strawberry shortcake, all the dolls, all that stuff. Care Bears, Get Along Gang, um, and then people who just want to watch my dancing. See, I think that's actually how I originally saw you. It was the dancing. Now, how really? did that come about? Oh, well, um, my husband died in uh, 2018 in October uh, after a long illness, uh, really heavy duty caretaking on my part. And so I was really in post-traumatic stress syndrome. Yeah, you know, It was really awful. And the only thing I found that made me get out of that, the deep kind of thing, was dancing. And I danced to one song over and over again, which is called All She Wants to Do is Dance. And my daughter says, Mom, you got to stop that you got to stop it. And I go, I'm, I'm not stopping it. But they wouldn't put it up because that song has, um, they refer to drugs and crazy drug stuff. And so they wouldn't play it. So oh. I, I'm going to find a song that they'll play. And then eventually I just kept finding song, song, song. And I find songs by titles. Um, and then I illustrate it by dancing. So it's part of my illustration. I love it. It's like so many different facets of creative work that you engage in. Yeah, I call it holistic creativity. I found a name for it. I love that. I love that. So tell me a little bit about your path to becoming a a, a creative person and how did that begin for you in life? Um, I'm one of seven children. A middle child, as I look at it, I'm the third, which the fourth would be the, the middle child. But that was a boy. So who cares? Right. So the boy, <laughs> you know, first son. I'm the like number three girl, as my father called me, number three girl. So our uh, fun was um, we had very little money. Uh, my parents were very bright people, but we didn't have a lot of money. So it was a lot of make believe, you know, and creating an art I always did art from the time I can remember. I always did art and it was my, I loved it. So unlike some people that have to, you know, go through many different phases of learning, you know, or deciding who they were, uh, I always wanted to be an artist as far, you know, as soon as I could articulate that, I said, I said, what do you want to be an artist, mm -hmm. a mommy and a secretary? <laughs> Did you fulfill the secretary part? Well, I thought that anytime you write, you're a secretary. Oh, okay. So I do write. So it's it's like that. I guess that was my thinking. You know, <laughs> it's like I'm I'm all of those things and more. Right? I didn't think I would be a dancer, but I made myself a dancer. <laughs> that's so, awesome. So that's how it started. And then um, growing up, I took every art class that was free you know, outside of school, including going over to the Museum of Art, which was way on the other side of town. And um, you had to, um, I think my parents drove us at first, but I was, the earliest I was four years old. And I'm sitting on a little camp chair in front of a Cezanne. Or was it a Manet? I think it was Manet and it was Haystacks. And I was drawing and I thought I was Manet. 
drawing those haystacks. So that was a, a whole lot of fun. And I always took any of those classes I could. Um, I had ice, high school art classes with, uh, with a not a good teacher. It's fine. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's not a good teacher. She, she just, she wanted your, your art to fit her uh, math. That's it. She didn't care, oh. you know, you know, and it was a Catholic school. So it was like some Catholic subject in a mat, whatever. Yeah. But I was taking classes every Saturday um, at Cooper School of Art with my sister. And we took classes there, which was an excellent school. And eventually, I did it so many years, I think I started maybe my sophomore year, took it three years, that I got a half tuition scholarship, and I went there. I went to oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and that was a commuter school. So, I, uh, my parents, you know, they wanted us to get further education, but they weren't going to pay for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> they would feed us when we came home from school. That's what they would do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went to I went, a commuter school too, so I understand that. Yeah, do you? So it's like, yeah. So my son went to, you know, uh, the Cleveland Institute of Art, and it was the same thing. And so I, as a mother, I would say, well, if he was at a college, full color, I wouldn't know what he was doing. So I got to keep my nose out of his business, you know? Mm -hmm. And he graduated with, you know, art degree too. Yeah. Are any of your children artists like you? Yes. My son is an artist. Mm -hmm. No one's like me, really. <laughs> no, no one could ever be. This is great. I'm a oneer. Um, so Colin got his degree in illustration. Uh, he became, uh, I call him computer magician for the Fetal Treatment Center, University of California, San Francisco. Okay. So he does. He do, he's not a tech, right? He could do tech, but that's not what he is. He. He does the content. He puts. He does the website. He does the filming and the videoing and the um, podcast and all that kind of stuff is all under his purview there. And then besides that, outside of that, he does performance art, and uh, he does um, he does a lot of things. So performance art. I was going to say what the other thing is that he does. Oh, he does um, medical illustration. Outside of his managerial job. That is a very technical illustration field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we, we never, so my husband was an artist as well. So we never taught our children how to draw, how to do art. We only supplied them with the materials. That way there was no competition, right? Oh, I like that. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's how we did it. And now my daughter is, um, a teacher teaches family consumer science and um, she doesn't, she's a good at interior decorating, but she doesn't have the art she, because she is adopted. <laughs> so um, she's very useful though. She's like organized, organized when I'm not. So that's excellent. That's awesome. Now you talked about a bad teacher, but have you had good teachers that you've really loved that have really influenced your art over the years? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jose. Oh, I don't know what remember what his last name, but he uh, he had such energy. Um, I'll probably. So this is just a point. I've had a, I had a stroke. So it takes me a while to pull things from my brain because it's it was a uh, cerebellum which does not control my brain. I'm just as smart as I ever was, but I have to, it takes a while to find this stuff. So it was mm -hmm. so, anyhow. And um, he taught, he was in my life class. So figure drawing. Okay. Um, and when I was in art school, I would skip some classes. <laughs> Who wouldn't, right? <laughs> I skipped a studio class. I didn't want to do studio class. <laughs> It wouldn't even apply these days. What the heck? So I would take extra life drawing and um, portrait drawing and all that kind of stuff. Figure drawing. That was my favorite and illustration. So I would do that. So so Jose, whatever Jose's last name is. And the funny thing is, so by the time my son went to art school, he was still teaching. He went to a different art school, but in Cleveland. And he had the same teacher I did, and he liked that teacher just as well. So it was really a very nice. 
Uh, I have teachers that uh, were on the more negative side. I had a, a teacher that was my um, head construction teacher, portrait teacher, very good. He was such a good teacher and his work was great. However, he said to me, I'm gonna give you an A because it's good. The illustration is good. However, I don't believe women belong in art. Ooh. So I have, I've been on computers since 1985 uh, because I decided, and I had no computer background at all. I decided there should be an, a color computer for the home, not a Mac, color computer for the home that I could afford and do art on. And I went around until I finally found a place and they go, how did you know there was going to be one? I don't know. So it was the Amiga. Oh, wow. Okay. And I did not know. So the three of us, my myself, my husband and my son uh, taught ourselves because there was no manual with it. Did not mm-hmm. come with manual. And my brother said, who was in computers, my brother Chris says, no one, be- no one buys a beta computer, Muriel. <laughs> I go, I do. And then people would say like, well, how is that going to make you money? I don't know. It's just another tool, right? And then look at it now. It's pervasive. I I do it all the time. I use it. I have to say I hate the question, how is it going to make you money when it comes to your art? Because I I write, I draw a little bit. I don't know that it'll ever make me money, but I love doing it. Right. And it feeds Mm -hmm. your soul. It does. So yeah, my dancing has yet to make me any money. But I, <laughs> I'm at I'm at now at um, 490. Dance. 490 separate dance videos. Wow. Yeah, uh-huh. Wow is right. Since it's November of 2018. <laughs> wow. So um, I'm going for 500. Mm-hmm. Ten more to go. Ten and, more to um, do it. So the latest ones, it had nothing to do with shortcake and toys, but the latest ones, um, I was asked by um, hip hop rap artist if I could dance to their music. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. I said, you want this old white lady dancing to your music? Yes. (laughs) So sure. Sure. I'm, I'm now writing rhyme for it. I'm writing rhyme for my own. Um, I've done like three or four because, you know, uh, I've done my poetry uh, was free verse mostly. Um, and rhyme to me is so easy. I, it's so easy for me to rhyme. It's no big deal. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh-huh. You know, you just think that that um, you think that most people think like you. They don't. <laughs> No, they don't. They don't. No. So I talk- like rhyming because it reminds me a lot of the hymns I grew up singing in church. Sure, sure. That may yep. even be a. That may even be something from my background. My father was one that um, had a beautiful voice. Um, he knew lyrics to thousands of songs. Um, he wrote down all the lyrics to all the songs. Um, he knew when he was quite old, he wrote them all down. I think there's 120 some 28 pages of songs that he knows by heart. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So I, I, up, want, I want that memory. <laughs> so I, I, I grew up in a family that loved music um, mm-hmm. and allowed us um, to do what we're going to do, you know. Uh, that's, free range. Um, that's a gift. That's a, that's real, a real gift. Just let go. Like, oh, she wants to be an artist. Sure. You know, mm-hmm. not like. And that's the, the thing about um, artists coming up now is that um, they're scared because uh, they're maybe it's always been that way because family's like, how are you going to make money as an artist? You know, you should be a lawyer or whatever. You should be an accountant, but you're not going to make the money being an artist. So I send the message out there. I made it. You can make it. If you stick to it. 
that's a message I love because I'm one of those people who went to, I became a pharmacist in, <laughs> instead of, you know, a writer. Yeah. And, it, but now I'm finally pivoting back to the art that I love. Nice. And yeah. Nice. So tell me a little bit how you got started with American Greetings as an artist oh, for them. Okay, so um, the school I went to uh, was had a small enrollment, really, but I graduated uh, near the top of my class, despite the fact that I skipped um, studio class. <laughs> and, the, and the director said, he called me into the office like, Okay, in order to graduate, you would have had to take studio class and getting it gotten at least a C plus in anatomy, and you didn't do either. But by that time, American Greetings has had accepted me as a as a you know as an employee, and I said, you know what? If you don't graduate me, you're not going to look so good. You look better on paper if you have people that have graduated and gotten jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. What, the bargaining. What, yeah, you know, 101, the art of manipulation. So um, I walked into the job pretty much. I got hired. Um, they hired uh, too many people, but I was one of them they hired. And they, uh, unlike some people, uh, back then there was a disparity, disparity between what women were paid, what men were paid. However, I was paid as much as the guys. So that was a little bit different. And I was put in a place called, um, um, department should have been called hell, but it was really um, our training to be, a, to be a greeting card artist. And they had hired too many. And so they were trying to get us to, get us to quit. They would do anything to get us to quit because we oh, hired no. too many. But I wouldn't quit. I was thinking, I've got a job, I'm sticking. <laughs> Yeah, you and you've got a job paying you to be an artist. Right. So they actually found a reason to fire me. Is couldn't paint roses. And um, you had to do um, color separation. And I'm just not neat and tidy that way. So I, could, I couldn't paint roses, and, and they were about ready to fire me. And then some a, a wonderful thing happened. The guy that was head of art training got another job. <laughs> Karma. So it wasn't a pretty thing, but I, you know, I kept, uh, I stayed in our training, and then um, one of the artists from the big, so the corporation had like 350 creatives at the time, so that's both artists and writers combo. So I just remember that number, and a really fabulous artist by the name is Maxine Masterfield. Um came from under the department and she was supposed to take the te the one that had teaching experience, artist that was in art and training, had teaching experience and then bring her into her department. Except she had no, that, that teacher, former art teacher had no pizzazz at all. And I have a pizzazz. So um, she picked me instead <laughs> and then put me into um, humorous, well, a lot of different departments looked at my work, work, and um, and the one that paints roses that wasn't going to work for them, you know, that that the conventional department. I didn't get I didn't get put into conventional department. I got put into humorous and juvenile design uh, planning. So that's how I got into American Greetings. Yeah. So now what? About what year was that that you started with American Greetings? I'm not telling you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I don't say. What, what I'm going to tell you, though, is by the time I had a few years in, by the time I did Strawberry Shortcake, and Strawberry Shortcake was going to be greeting cards, mm -hmm. and, um, and it didn't have a name at that time. Uh, it was just going to be a character. They had a thing called promotional lines that you put in between the holiday lines so that the greeting card company could keep their territory, as it were. OK. So, uh, and then if it's if they go out and they sell whatever, then they'd make them a permanent part of the line. So that was the idea. And my boss came to me. My art director said, I want a 
ragdoll character, I want strawberries, I want daisies, I want pink, I want red. That was the story, what he wanted me to do. And then I worked from that. So really the character they probably had least that I had, that I had any direction at all was the shortcake character. Strawberry shortcake herself. The 39 characters or whatever I developed after that was strictly from me. Oh, but nobody, cool. nobody got in my way. They just did not. They were just like, oh, so she's going to do, let's pick one out. Um, oh, gosh, Angel Cake. And she's going to give Angel Cake a skunk pet. No one stopped it. <laughs> <laughs> that would not happen today, right? That just wouldn't no. happen today. They would, no, you, you would be... You would be managed into a corner. Absolutely. And so then there was a um, strawberry shortcake issue because I gave her short red hair. And I gave her big feet. And chubby cheeks. And my art director said, we're going to have to slim down the cheeks. She should have small feet and should have long combable hair. And I said, OK, well, maybe so. But you'll have to find another artist to do that. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I don't know where I get the schutzpah, really, I don't. But uh, it's always kind of been me. And and so they stuck to with <laughs> design. I, I was a designer. So how it made the toy thing is how that happened was um, Bernie Loomis, who was over General Mills, is the one that made Star Wars a licensing phenomenon. He came to American Greetings. Now he may have also gone to um, Hallmark, but I don't really know. And um, the head of, the creative vice president at that time was Tom Wilson of Ziggy fame. Okay. And so he brings, he said, this is a story. He always told good stories. So I, I have to say this is the story he told us. He had his briefcase and they pulled properties out one at a time. First being Ziggy. Sure, little girl's going to like a bald little guy. No, I don't think so. So he brings that out and then he brings out several more. Now, Shortcake had already been in the test market. Did not come out number one in the test market of the promotional. I think was three or four. So it was the last one he pulled out. And then Bernie Loomis says, that's it. That's going to be toys. It's going to be decor. It's going to be, um, I don't know. He says it's going to be animation and it's going to be an amusement park. It never made an amusement park. Didn't Dang. <laughs> it did not. But it did everything else. Um, I don't know what they said. That made, she made, they made a half a billion in the first two years on that. Wow. On the line. Right. And at that point, yeah. I, I've got a quick question about character creation. Is there one particular character you, like, you were just sitting at your kitchen table drinking a cup of coffee or tea or whatever, water, or maybe having wine, who knows? But is there, like, any particular character? I'm a bourbon you, girl, really, actually. Oh, but. okay, cool. Well, were you, like, at the bar drinking bourbon and you came up with that idea for a character? Yeah. Um, Here's the thing. People will ask me, what character are you most alike or you see yourself in? Mm -hmm. Honestly, they're all a part of me. They're all a part. So whenever I took one on, mm -hmm. I got under my little mushroom imaginative world. And then I brought it out. Now, I have a, a certain affinity to Blueberry Muffin. Um because it was the first one I did without direction. And um, people still love her hat. Like, what? It looked like a muffin. I got to put the theme together. It was in Cheesecake, the mouse, and it was just uh, so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and all the characters were so much fun. Management was not fun, but it never is, is it? No. <laughs> no. And, and it was like, get it done quick. Because you got, you know, number more, you have a lot more to do. Like in the day I called it strawberried, B U R I E D, um, because it was a lot. It was a lot. The shortcake of the lines I worked on 
now that's kind of hard because I also loved uh, doing um, Get Along Gang because it was a story, right? And it was um, styled after um, our gang, you know, Little Rascals. Oh, it, yeah. Yeah. So so I was working with a writer, Tom Jacobs, and um, – and he loved the Little Rascals. I loved the Little Rascals. And we talked about it and we said, you know what? Let's not make it boys and girls. Let's make it animals because then it's our own thing. And uh, we worked on it. And I, it, it was just a lot of fun. Care Bears I was doing at the same time as Strawberry Shortcake. Because if I have not enough to do. and um, Strawberry for sure. Yeah, and so that came from a brainstorm. So I, by that time, I was with the separate group called Those Characters from Cleveland. Yeah, I was going to actually ask you how that came about. Oh, gosh. So so that was the, the plot, that they were going to bring all any of the card characters that were licensable over to the separate unit, including Ziggy, right? And then Shortcake, right? So that's what they were going to do. Meanwhile... To, to get a program ready to, for shortcake, um, we had, um, this is crazy, we had a $1,000 budget, <laughs> and we had to get a dial done, we had to get writing done, I had to do art, and we couldn't let marketing know, so if marketing walked through, we had to keep doing art. Our regular greeting cards, you had to keep up with production, right? So anyhow, when it happened, and I've been working on, you know, getting this ready, I had my sister make the doll. It was crazy. And finally, I stopped Ralph uh, Schaefer, who was going to be the president of our, our group and um, or the creative director. I don't know what he was at that point. And he comes walking. In. I said, Ralph, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. And, I, and he says, well, I don't have time. I said, OK, take me with you. <laughs> oh. Take me. I want to be part of that group. This very small group. I like, I like the start of things, you know. Yeah. It's just like this cool feeling. And he says, "You're going, but we have to extricate you from the big corporation because they didn't want to go of me. Mm-hmm. They just wanted to hold on to me." Well, yeah, you're pumping out greeting cards for them. Like, well, I mean, I, um, you know, things eventually you realize about yourself um, that you don't realize when it's happening and. And that is that um, I'm definitely an inspirer of other people. And um, I was in, I was, uh, I had taken over our training within the department. So all the new people coming in, I would, and I got no extra money for that, but I just like, oh, I like it. Bring art along, you know, mm-hmm. it's cool. So I, I'm not really sure that the person that uh, wanted to hold on to me was um, Wendell Sartain and he was gone. By the time I wanted to ask him, like, why in the world did you not want to release me into this other thing? I would have liked to have known why, but he was upset that I was going. Mm. I was going over to the other thing. So, so that's how I, that I moved over there um, to those characters from Cleveland, which was named by Tom Wilson, TCFC. I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> he was brilliant. Tom, Tom Wilson was brilliant. That's for sure. Uh, so that you know, that's where how I ended up, and we had just a little, it's a little old factory in um, Cleveland. So we were moved off base, so it wouldn't embarrass the big corporation. Just move them, move them over there, let them have fun, and uh, create toys. So we became what was really known as a think tank. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I mean, so many, so many properties came out of those characters from Cleveland right, right. in the 80s. Barnyard Commandos, um, mm-hmm. My Pet Monster, oh, which was yeah. so My Pet Monster. I actually somebody in the United States, one of my followers actually owns one of my drawings that I did for it. Oh, now, I didn't oh. create, I didn't create it and I forgot I even worked on it at all. But it's an early drawing. He's like, wow, I didn't even know that I did that. So, 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 yeah. So uh, my pet monster, which my sister, Susan, who did the first plush for shortcake for Care Bears from my artwork, 
And she created that stuff and she was freelance at first, but eventually came on board. But then uh, she invented Popples. Oh, cool. Oh, a classic. Yeah. So it kind of ran in the family. Well, there's two of us. Um, and what my youngest sister, I would say that she can uh, do art as well. But the two of us definitely out of seven, right, that yeah, yeah. went into the art field uh, professionally. Uh huh. Do you yeah. know what happened? Do you know what happened to the originals that your sister made? She has. Oh, she does wow. still? Wow. Well, her daughter has been selling them and making mucho bucks. Because when she did it, she would do like six samples. Oh, okay. You have archetype, I guess, is the very first. And then you would do the prototype sample. And then you would do samples. And so she had some of the samples and some of the clothing and some of the extra things that people lose that belong to those uh, properties, you know, so, Mm -hmm. so she's been selling them and, you know, uh, she is, um, she's been right. She's older than I am, but not by very much. And she's been retired for years now, um, but worked for many, many different toy companies after American greetings. She did. She's a genius. You know, I follow, she's the oldest, she's older than I am. And I'm followed by, you know, Susan, who's a genius, <laughs> but I draw better. <laughs> oh. uh, just I draw a little better. competition keeps things fresh. Yeah, I think yeah. So yeah, we went to our we went to the uh, Cleveland Museum of Art together and just different things. And I talked her today, just today, but she's uh, she's very inventive. You know, when she did popples, she goes, "Oh, it's just like rolling socks," you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. that's so true. I never even thought about that. Mm-mm, no. Yeah, she had this. She can envision all of that dimensional. I can I can see things in dimension, which is quite interesting because I'm only one eyed, but I can still mm-hmm. see things in dimension. But she is definitely can like I can sew this. I can put this. I can put you know. She really was very good about that. But she's not out there like I am because. <laughs> Because she makes, uh, because her husband, they have, they've made a lot of money in their life. And um, my money's gone because my husband's uh, illness. So, oh. uh-huh, so we had to, I don't know, spend all the money on him. Whatever, what you do for love, that's what you do. For sure. For sure. Uh-huh. Do you have any funny stories of like you and your sister going back with the prototypes that she was making? Like, would you drive over there at like? No. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, okay. yeah, I got to be the boss. <laughs> ah, cool. <laughs> I got to direct her. Oh, uh, Susan, you need to be. But uh, we were, we always got along, you know, pretty yeah, well. Yeah. It, there was uh, some moments in our life, in our childhood, where we, we had to <laughs> but, uh, but as adults, uh, we got along pretty well. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, so this was a funny thing. Eventually, she came in shop, right? She became our, she became the, the, dimensional artist there and she came there and I had taken I had taken five years off from those characters from Cleveland because I wanted to see who the heck I was without a corporation on my back right Mm -hmm. so so I left and they were having me go in back and forth the people that were saying they're stealing shortcake and I had to go to courtrooms and I had to do depositions like okay oh oh my gosh right I don't need this. So I, I took some time off and they thought I was going to take six months and I took like five years. <laughs> Good for you. And I went back because we need the money. Our insurance wasn't working. So and my kids were going toward, you know, up, you know, higher education. Yeah. And so, so I went back and um, I said, uh, can I have my job back? Back and they go. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to be gone six months. Ah, eh. Yeah. So, <laughs> So Susan was already working there. She was working there. And I had this this uh, program I was working on and she had to do the plush. She had to do design. And I said, oh, Susan, we have to have a meeting. And she goes, uh, talk to my secretary. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? So I, uh, it was a little different. I didn't have a secretary. She had her secretary, so I'll take care of that. But I thought, how funny. She's a little more protocol than I am, that's for sure. 
Was she the best one you, you think at bringing your drawings to oh, life? Absolutely. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, I did I work with other I worked with the, some of the people that were on her staff. Um, they couldn't breathe the life into it. I don't know what to tell you there. You know, mm -hmm. they lost something in the transition. Um, I mean, I lose things in my transition. I can go from my rough, which is like all kinds of energy and movement and feeling and whatever. And I do layers to get a cleaner whatever. And yeah. in those layers, sometimes I lose what I had originally in my thing. And of course, then yeah. it goes to dolls and then it does, well, it's going to lose some more because it goes in. But I think Kenner did a fabulous job. I think they did a marvelous job. And, and, um, who Tommy did, uh, did, um, um, yeah, get along gang. And I liked the work that they did for sure. That was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, Care Bears was Kenner again, but you know, so Care Bears, this is, a lot of people love them and I love that they love them. However, yeah. this is the thing. You develop one Care Bear, you change a little expression on the face and you got the next Care Bear. Right. <laughs> and it's a different color. But I have to tell you a Care Bear story that I love. So yeah, when, I do my, when I do my meets and greets, people come and they tell me their stories. And I listen. I'm a very good listener to their stories. And they're all over the map, the stories. But one of them comes up and is like, okay, so um, – when I was young, my parents were divorced. And I go, okay, here it goes. Steal it because it's just going to be tough. She's going to tell you a tough story. Be ready for this. And my father lived in a different state. I go, oh, boy. And so I'd have to fly from one state to the next. And my first flight, I went up in the airplane, and I was expect expecting to see Care Bears in the clouds and God. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> oh man that poor kid <laughs> <laughs> right next to god the care bears isn't right. that wonderful I that's just, awesome that was like my <laughs> one of my favorite stories oh. uh, other, other than a, a woman who was in burlesque and she came over and whispered in my ear okay i have a strawberry shortcake story to tell you go oh boy here we go burlesque what's she doing? <laughs> okay so I stole my first strawberry shortcake doll. Oh. And I said, you're forgiven. Oh. I said, you, they cost a lot of money. And I just made up a story. Your parents didn't have the money. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, how kidding? funny. How funny is that? So there's the funny ones and there's tragic stories, but it's um, so they have to come. You know, one had her whole collection burnt to the ground with their house, their family house burnt to the ground and all her shortcake characters and dolls went. And she traveled from San Antonio to Tulsa to my meet and greet because Aww. she wanted to meet me so bad. Aww. What does it mean to you that? that people love your creations in this way, that they have such deep interwoven meaning into their lives. This is what I think I, I'm, I'm um, thankful. I mean, I, at one point, like I'm not a doctor, I'm not saving people, I'm not a fireman, I'm not saving people's lives, but you know, in a way it was saving some children's lives, really their emotional life. And uh, I, I am glad I am with, I was with properties that had wholesomeness to them, you know, a wholesome foundation to them. They weren't, I mean, I'm glad I didn't do binary commandos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as fun as they were, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah. they, they still resonate and they're still there. I mean, the least shortcake and care bears are still there. People are like, Oh, well they went away. They didn't go away. Ebbed and float, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my last real drawing for Shortcake was in um, 2003, where I was freelancing, and I did the mermaids, which I didn't really remember. I did the mermaids. I'm telling you, I didn't remember. <laughs> and I went going through my archive and go, holy cow, I did the mermaids. <laughs> I did them freelance, and they, you know, followed through on it. So.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I worked on them a long time. Shortcake was the one I worked on the longest. Mm-hmm. So recently, I I had this thought, this crazy thought hit me. It's like, you know what? Bam. Strawberry shortcake is so much bigger than you. So much more important than you. And that's when I drew strawberry shortcake and me as her ragdoll. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, I love it. Me too. So I have done a series, and I think I'm on drawing number seven, of me and then shortcake. The first is she's just holding me, and I'm just a ragdoll hanging. She's much bigger than me, and she's holding me. And then there was they're back to back, and they're having tea together. And then one where they're coloring together and then one where I am at the drawing board and I am drawing strawberry shortcake and she's leaning over and watching me draw. Oh, oh, that's so cool. Oh, I see it on your Instagram. That is so cute. And so what I'm doing now, which I don't want to do, but I am doing this. I'm putting together a book. I'm going to make a book with it. And I'm not going to be a story about the two of them. It's really going to be like. This is the drawing I did. This is why I did it. This is why it's meaningful to me. Kind of autobiographical in a way, in a yeah, way. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I have one where she's holding balloons and she's, you know, me, me which I'm calling X small. So is holding the balloons and she's floating up in the air and the cat's holding on her ankle. And that was brought about by uh, I had a meet and greet strawberry shortcake day and a balloon maker said, oh, would you like an arrangement? for a balloons for your event. And I said, I sure would, but you know, I don't have the budget, but thanks for asking. It's fine. Oh no, it's not going to cost you anything. Well, then I'm in. (laughs) 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 Then you got me. And um, it was in Tulsa and she was a little bit late coming in, but it's like, I didn't write no expectations. And she did this fabulous balloon thing. She came from Arkansas to do this. Oh, wow. Right. Mm-hmm. It was amazing, amazing, cool. and it, and they put them on the outside of the building, and so you could really say see where I was, mm-hmm. and I there was a line wrapped around the buildings, which I didn't even wasn't even aware of. I wasn't aware. I gave everybody about three minutes. It's about all I had to give mm-hmm. because it was like was it three or four hours that I did it? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a few quick questions. Okay, you can have what long. Is it? <laughs> what does it feel like knowing that you've touched the lives of so many people and helped them through ups and downs and created memories that they've carried through their childhood and adulthood? I'm happy to make them happy. Aww. I don't want to disappoint them. I want to stay vibrant and show them that you can be as old as great aunt Muriel and still be in there. Right. Mm-hmm. And still do our and so that's really what I'm doing. This is how I feel. I don't take it on like, oh, look at look at you. Look at all these people that love you. No, it's really about. I look at people as as they're all universes. And so when I do a meet and greet, I am exhausted the next day, completely out because I've given all I could for that day and for that right. person. And then there's a whole lot of things. There's a whole lot of things. There's like bringing up the young people that want to be artists and encouraging them, you know, by being a person there that they could re- somehow relate to. Right. right. Um, and then um, the diversity of, see this the diversity of Tulsa, for instance, of the world is to bring those that have not been recognized, you know, and, and ignored um, and show them that they, if they want to do art and be creative, they can be. So it's a whole, I guess it's a whole different thing. I I didn't know how I would be after a while. And I thought, you know what, I'm still me. Um, And I'm, you know, I am an icon, sure. Uh, Mm, (laughs) Oh, for sure. I go to, I go to. I go to the gypsy, the gypsy uh, coffee shop. And there's always people that are like, (gasps) so this is what I do. So this, this is my game that I play. I go, do you know why I'm famous and not rich? And they go, no, why? Strawberry shortcake, care for us, and get along. Game. And go, no way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I go, way, way. So if it makes them happy and they want pictures, 
Now, when I do my events, I have to charge for pictures because the other people that are guest stars or whatever charge for their pictures. Yeah, right. So I charge for my pictures. Um, I charge for my signing. But when I sign and I charge, that all goes to charity. So I pick a local charity. Aww. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Because my daughter says, Mom, you are the charity. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's, <laughs> but it's like um, the Reed Foundation is for disadvantaged youth, and I, I give it to that. And then um, Families Fighting Childhood Cancer is another one. American Heart Association is another one. Um, not, you know, it's just like, so I ask them for a $5 donation, and it'll add up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So that's how I feel about the people that are across from me. I see them as individuals, mm-hmm. as universes, you know. They want to, I mean, the husbands are like, I, I have to give credits to the husbands and boyfriends. They're going like, okay. <laughs> uh. We're, but they're just a delight. But I've had some men that have collected as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, if nothing else, Purple Pyman, you know, because they had to play that with their sisters. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> yep. And the Care Bears, of course. And then you hear, you know, really wonderful stories. The one guy had... Um, what did he have? He had a long illness as a child, leukemia. He had leukemia for years. And uh, the, he had Sunshine Bear. It was his bear that he held on to. Oh. And, um, and it meant something. He was an adult. And the other another guy like, comes up and he's like almost like a secret. It's like, okay. Okay, so I'm coming here for me because I have to tell you that I had Care Bears. And I, and I played with Strawberry Shortcake and the characters. But don't tell other people, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know what? Guess what? You're not the first guy to tell me oh. that. You are oh. not. I sent my some of my drawings before I went back on the road and doing my stuff. I had a person down in Medicine Park, uh, two people, and they were both going over to uh, the Middle East to fight. I guess it was Iraq at the time. And they were both going over there. And uh, one was a woman and one was a man. And he said, I always like strawberry shortcake. But we didn't, I didn't get in because I was the boy. But so I did them drawings. And so those drawings were in their um, lockers in Iraq. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a, I don't know. It's been for me. Um, and I wasn't going to do the shortcake thing or anything on the shortcakes and nothing on the Care Bears when I came out with my art studio again after my husband died. And my friend David said, you know what? That's your door. That's your door opening up to everything else you do. And um, at that point, I had 80 people on Instagram. And he said, um, you know, you're going to have to get more than 80 people on Instagram in order to do anything. You know, let's, yeah. let's get those numbers up, Muriel. And uh, he would take me to my art class, to our art class, not his class. It was a group, our figure drawing group. And he said, you have to build that. And he was at 142 at that point, 142 followers. And I hit 143. And I called him David. <laughs> <laughs> I beat your numbers. So I had a, I had my um, California family, my daughter-in-law reached out to other people to have them join me, whatever. That was my first influx of people. So David is now at um, like 360 and I'm at 15,000. <laughs> wow. I, I can't even imagine. <laughs> people like, they'll meet me like I'll be in a drugstore. It was like, I was in the drugstore and I was, you know, getting a prescription and somebody says, Muriel. And I thought, well, there's not many of us, right? I go, they got to be me. And I go, hello. It didn't look familiar or whatever. She goes, I'm on your Instagram. I go, oh, at that point, you and 14,000 other people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. <laughs> uh, I, I, that's one of my favorite things is when they'll say, um, I had an Uber driver just the other day pick me up. And she goes, Muriel, it's you. I go, <laughs> it is me. <laughs> so star quality, right? So um, it's kind, of, it's fun because it makes people happy. Mm-hmm. It does. So I was with my um, 
my other ride that takes me places. I call it driving this crazy. I don't have a car. I don't own a car. I don't drive and vice versa. I don't drive. I don't own a car. I'm one eyed. I have some vision problems. So I have people and I call them driving this crazy. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> certain people. so the person that takes me to my Monday night um, art gathering, Tulsa community gathering, uh, is a stand up comedian. So um, Evan and people know who he is. And we were at the, the uh, coffee house and people like this one woman was goo over Evan because he's a big deal in Tulsa. I had no idea who he was to start with. But anyway, she's like, oh, it's Evan. It's like, and she gets done, you know. And I said, um, by the way, I'm more famous than he is. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Isn't that, I mean, it's, I like fun, obviously. Yeah, yeah. oh, for sure. Like fun. I'm just nothing dry about what I do at all. No. How long have you been doing the meet and greets now for? Well, so they kicked back in um, in um, 2019. And 2019 in August, um, I was hit by a car as I walked the dogs. And Mm -hmm. I, I ended up in emergency. I had a concussion. But I had signed contracts. I'm not going to let go of those contracts. So like two and a half weeks after I got hit by a car, I had a concussion. I went out to Denver for the retro tour. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Wow. Under Dana Kane. And I was the special guest. So in other words, I had a talk and I had a table and nobody came with me. I was carrying three suitcases. Oh, my. But Dana is fabulous. I didn't. Are you aware of Dana Kane? Out of no, a, I'm not familiar. Yeah, she does all kinds of '80s toys stuff, mm-hmm. and a, she's a, a veteran of it. You know, she's really super good at it, oh. and just a delight. And her staff is a delight, and everything. So, um, not that it made it easy. It was a tough. It was tough going, but that was my first. So that was. Uh, but I have done. I'm going to say a dozen since. A dozen of them. So, um, including my sons out in um, San Francisco. Oh, so cool. he so he does um he does a gaming one. It's like his one of his side things he does one is called Big Bad Con where people come and the the profits all go goes to doctors without borders. So they had Big Bad Con and they had this thing draw my character. So he had me there, Mom, you want to do this? I said, okay. So then he advertised me before before I went there. I was going to visit him anyhow. So he advertises that, you know, I'm coming, whatever. I said, Colin, how's it go? Because it's a limited number. It's 900 people that are allowed to be part of this. And I said, how did I? He says, uh, we're, we're sold out. I said, well, that's great. Do you always sell? Uh, no, Mom, we don't always sell out. Could it be that your mother's on the agenda? <laughs> Is your mother's coming, Colin? <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow, good for you. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'm drawing people's characters. And I have uh, only my son was always involved in the games, right? He's always since he was like, I'm going to say, um, a preteen. You know, when they thought that Dungeons and Dragons were going to sell send you to hell or whatever back then. But <laughs> yes. he was always involved in it. And, um, so where was I going with with that necessarily? Oh, so draw draw my character. So one woman comes up and she says, "Okay, so you know in Dungeons and Dragons, blah blah blah." And I go, "I don't know that." Nope. I said, "What you're going to do is you're going to describe your character, and I'm going to draw it. And if you don't like it, I will rip it up in front of you." <laughs> oh, okay. And she goes, "No." No, <laughs> mm-hmm. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have ripped her in front. Of her. <laughs> well, she would be crazy if she didn't like whatever you drew. I know. Her. Right. <laughs> I was thinking that too. Because the value has gone up now with my artwork. I'd put that on the wall in two seconds. <laughs> right. <laughs> I do have a person that has a whole wall dedicated to me. Ah, oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. It's called, it's called the Muriel Wall. If I put something up for sale, she buys it. And mm-hmm. um, and Lord help somebody who tries to, to uh, get it before her. She's got it. <laughs> She's already. She's on that button. 
I think she got most of the mermaids. She just like, because oh, it, it was original <laughs> art, right? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so she came with her whole family from Missouri down to uh, one of my meets and greets. And uh, her son is um, has um, is autistic, but severely so, and then has several other problems. And um, he comes, and he's like, in this crazy crowd, right? And he's walking and usually he uses some kind of an aid in walking, but he's walking. And then she has her mother in a wheelchair. Her mother has Alzheimer's. Uh-huh. And then her uh-huh. husband is there. And he was like, wow. I think I may have cried at that moment. That and is, I, that's yeah. some dedication to get there. That is um, incredible. So we're very, we're very good friends now. Um, and she is in the doll world. She is making, she is selling, um, high, high, um, class dolls from doll makers. That's what her dream is. She's a doctor. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's what she's doing. Um, I know a lot about a lot of these people Mm -hmm. because they're just like, and some are very, I'm very close to. Oh, yeah. I, I do have one more question. Have you ever, I mean, I'm sure you've received a lot of fan art, but have you ever received erotic fan art of your characters? No, not yet. <laughs> oh, no. oh, please. <laughs> really? No. Oh, sure. <laughs> and then I have a, somebody's local and she's made me, and she's the seamstress and she's made me aprons to go with my characters, my uh, meets and greets. Mm-hmm. So, oh, um, cool. So lemon oh, meringue, so. oh my gosh, the lemon meringue, I mean, it was the apron, and then the chef's hat uh, that went with it, it's like, wow, beautiful, and then strawberry shortcake, and I put it on, and I'm not a frilly person, this is really me, I'm not frilly, okay, at all, and this this is very frilly and strawberry and whatever, but I put it on, nobody wants me to leave, not wear that they want me to wear it and if you haven't seen the video where i'm actually dancing to strawberry song at my meet and greet i'm dancing and that was like the people like oh my god (laughs) she's dancing Mm -hmm. it's like so it's not like i don't know what other people's meets and greets i've never been to one i'm just you know i do it the way i do it you know that's all you got all your love of frills out in your drawings instead of your clothing. And they, and they expect my house is going to be frilly. It's not. I mean, you can kind of see my background. It's not. I have, I think, a more of a masculine kind of a feel to my my house. It's uh, arts and crafts and stuff. I collect arts and crafts. And I collect staplers. Yes, I do. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> I collect. I'm a collector for life. You know, I like I like collect things, things. So, yeah. so I, um, staplers. But that collection is done. I have 80 of them. That's enough, right? And, <laughs> uh, then, any more. And, and then, and then I was collecting for a while pictures of me with very tall men. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. So I'm five foot tall, and I'd say. Um, and I talked to him, right? Like, would you mind getting a picture with me? He's like, what? No, no, you're tall. I'm short. I get pictures of tall men. This is my hobby. So I do this. I, and I said, you are over six foot three. And he goes, no, I'm six foot two. Sorry. You got to be over six foot three. Or I don't. Oh. <laughs> so I think I collected, uh, a foot. <laughs> I collected 20. I collected, uh, I think 20. I have 24 pictures of me with these really tall guys. And uh, one thing I discovered about that. Is that sometimes when you're small, people overlook you, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you're tall, somebody underlooks you because you're so out of the, you know, I view. And they tend to be gentle giants, the guys that I've met. That's just my opinion. It's my form. It's what I'm my analyzing the whole thing is. And uh, gosh, I'm not doing that anymore. So, I mean, I was kind of like, okay, that's over. Staplers are over. Uh, I don't know what I'm collecting now. I've had to collect my own art. I have had to collect my own dolls because I got very few samples. Very few. Oh, no. Oh, no, I did not get samples. They come into the company and the, it would be like management would first go through them. And then and then then um, I don't know. 
the uh, marketing people would take them. And by the time it got down to us, we didn't get much artist on the board. Do you have any <laughs> prototypes or anything? At I all? Oh, I have, damn. I have a drawing uh, dated 1981 of Strawberry Shortcake, and it's a first layer sketch. And I don't know why I have it, because what they did is any of my drawings got put in a safe for the copywriter, for the copyright holders. Which makes sense, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's happened. And I did not walk away with anything except for some reason for this this bottom lot layer sketch that I did of Strawberry Shortcake, which I've made copies of and sold it. And people really like it. It has a it has the true feeling of Strawberry Shortcake. Oh, and it was absolutely. kind of like a turning point. There was a point where because I did the first drawing in 77, there's a turning point where she actually came out on her own, that she looks a little bit different, that she's got the feel, I believe, you know. And so all my art that I sell, I sell prints mostly, but I always have a backstory on it. Oh, cool. I love that. I love that because anytime you mentioned earlier, anytime you have a story with with art, it's always a little more powerful, isn't it? It is, and I, I think I picked this. This is interesting. I saw, I sold on eBay for years, and I sold whole, whole, whole pawn shops, and um, one of them had Native American paintings, lots of them, and the one, um, um, see, I'm not gonna remember his name was Larry, and he was Comanche, and he would always write on the back of his art, write a story, and his art was beautiful. And then, like, I have a medicine man one that has the whole thing. I sold most of it, but I kept, you know, the one I loved. Oh, yeah. 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 Hood. His name was, yeah, see, I knew it. I, I, I have word lag. So, yeah, Larry Hood, um, tragically, tragically, he died of, like, alcoholic Mm. And his brother, his brother went on, and his brother did better, but he wasn't as good really as Larry, in my mind. So I learned about that real quickly because I had to sell all this art. I learned about that. That's um, I'm uh, pretty good with uh, information, like learning things pretty quickly. Like my my new rap, you know, I write rap now. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah. Not me. I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> but they had. They were. I was there, and they go, "Okay, okay. You want to get up and and then make up some rap right now?" And I go, "No, I don't. But I'll go home and I'll write some. How about yeah. that?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. And so I've written five or six now in like maybe last two weeks, three weeks. Oh, cool. I recited them last night at the poetry thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So when I actually put a, I actually put a background on one of them, a beat on the back. Oh, look at you! You're going from a doll designer to a world class rapper. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm thinking. So one of the guys, the guys there do really write the music, um, but this was not one of theirs. And um, so I want them to write. They said they would do it for me. Write it and see if we can get it on Spotify. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> should. Right? Do it. Yeah, yep, do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Because why not, right? It's called, yeah. um, I listen to podcasts and on psychology. I love psychology. So this one podcast, and it calls it um, Principled Insubordination. And I use hashtag unruly. So in other words, you can break the rules, go ahead and break them, but you have to have the solid basis as why you're doing it. You have to really understand why you're doing it. And it's not just the reactive thing. It's something that, like for me, like why shouldn't I be doing rap when the guys that do rap want me to dance to their music? Obviously, they think it's okay. So that's, we cross that bar. And then right. the fact that I'm a senior and that people need to hear what a senior has to say sometimes. Yeah, I agree. I wanted to ask a little bit. I was reading in your bio that you worked for a while for the company Inesco. Yes. And I, I wanted to I wanted to hear a little bit about that as well. Well, I yeah, and I, I left that job. Um, 
because I didn't like the boss. The boss was abusive. I tell you there. Um, I went from American Greetings. American Greetings kind of um, they absorbed absorbed those characters of Cleveland eventually when toy industry was not selling. It was just not new ideas weren't selling, and so and it was so things maybe, like Lady Lovely Locks, for instance, or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So so it was. Um, they were still making money on it. It wasn't like a lost cause, but it wasn't making enough for a big corporation. Okay. To qualify to have a separate place where it is and all that kind of stuff and a separate department. So they made it a department versus, and they took a number of people with them, but I wasn't one of them mm. um, because I'm a troublemaker. So <laughs> I don't believe it. I just say, you know, I'm just, oh boy. You don't know when I'm going to leave. You don't, you know, that's the thing. They didn't trust, you know, like I took a, they thought I was going to take six months. I took five years. I mean, they, you know, I understand <laughs> if I was that, like, do, uh, I don't know about her. So I was out of a job. And I thought, well, they said, take any job you can at American Greetings, even if it's less pay, just take it. I go, no, <laughs> no. I said, I'm a specialized talent. So I took a job at an ESCO and um, the boss was not good. But I was over uh, Barbie. Uh, oh. License over the original Barbie uh, the first couple years, right? Uh, over vintage Barbie. Oh, wow. So what I kind of products it. did you guys make? Music then? boxes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly the stuff was in porcelain. Um, I, I don't even know what else, uh, maybe the heads, I don't know. It was like all beautifully done. Yeah. Porcelain. And I found that, you know, the collectors, I had to go out and find the collectors that had the originals, uh, that were willing to sell it. And mostly it was men that I got them from. Mm -hmm. And I went to the Barbie convention. Oh, how fun was that? And they did a, they did a, um, a, a woman and they, uh, wrapped her like they would be designing a dress for the doll so they did that right there one of the designers went out and like we do this oh, cool. it was it was some very cool thing um and then we went to a um concert with the drifters and then we had a meal together and we all uh, prayed and we were like prayed prayed <laughs> god blessed all these people that came here and and last of all but most of all god bless barbie <laughs> oh. Hashtag God bless Barbie. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. And we're looking at each other and like, don't laugh, don't laugh, okay, <laughs> don't laugh. They're gonna see that we're not collectors, that we're artists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the so I was over. Us. So I was over Barbie. I was over really. I was not an artist in the board, though. I did some of the art there, but I was a senior art director. And then okay. we were also over uh, Mickey and Co which was fun. I had a special, I had a designer that worked on Mickey and Co. And he was really brilliant and he did great. So, so those were the kind of properties that I handled um, there. And I loved my team, but my boss was, I don't know, I couldn't deal with her anymore. I said, I'm going to find another job. And that's how I ended up, up down in Oklahoma. Yeah. Eventually made vice president. Wow. Of, creative, of creative for a corporation. I did. I was so proud of that, you know? I would be, too. Yeah, I got, like, um, I have zero degrees. Doesn't matter. You know, went in there, and um, the boss, who we're best, we're really still friends. The CEO and I are still friends. However, a lot of people quit because of him, because he had office rage. So, a lot of people. <laughs> and they're, like, scared of him. Like, I by this time, I'm not scared of anybody, right? I'm just not. So I figure I'll take the office that was vacated. This was how I got the job, I swear. I, the office was vacated. I thought, I'm taking that office instead of a cubicle. I'm moving my stuff over there. I moved that, and then I became a vice president. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was other. He actually uh, hired in his vice presidents a diversity in vice presidents, which I, I just give him credit for 100%. Mm -hmm. He's just that kind of guy, which is like said, he said to me, I will never lie to you ever. Wow. Good. He said, so if I say something, I'm going to write this down. 
You're going to put it in your file. And if I go up against that, you pull it out and you show it to me. Wow. Who's a taskmaster? But, you know, that I thought, you know what? I'll work for you because you're like that. And then one time in one meeting, he was lying. Mm -hmm. yeah, lying. And I thought, oh, okay. I went back to my office and he comes over and he looks at me and go, I know, you were lying. <laughs> <laughs> he apologized. Yeah. He yeah. was lying to you or to the yeah. people in, okay. The people in the, in the room. Okay. He was lying to them, really, not directly to me, but he was lying about what, uh, what I don't even remember what it was, but it's like, oh boy, that's not the truth. Right. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was fine. But we're still friends and he's, you know, he's moved on and I've moved on and it's, it's good. Right, I mean, right. he, he did say originally, he said, um, he came in, he was a mercenary there. Somebody else had bought the company and he was the guy that they put ahead of it. And he comes in and he had worked for Fleur Baseball Card, made it make a profitable, a profitable company. Then he worked for Del Monte, once again, made it profitable. Now he was there in giftware. Surrounded by creatives. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit of a stretch to go from canned tomatoes to creatives. So exactly, right. exactly what I said. He said he said he's coming back and he says uh, doing certain thing. He says, well, you know what? It ain't. It's not rocket science. And I said, I turn around and go, and it's not canned tomatoes either. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of trouble, did you ever feel there was a rivalry between Strawberry Shortcake and Rainbow Bright? No, because here's the deal. Here we go. The person I did Rainbow Bright was Gigi Santiago, Gunter Graden Santiago, and we were friends. Oh, get out oh, of here. Wow. We would double date back in the back in the years. Wow, how cool. And so I love her. Um, and she's brilliant and she's a born artist, you know, she had no art education and was so good. She's Latvian is her background. Um, she was amazing. Eventually she did work for me at UNESCO. She did sculpting for me. But she was a drawer mostly, but she could sculpt. She could do anything. I'll be I'll be but I, I mean, I really haven't talked to her recently or anything. She's a little older than I am, so I don't know. You know where she is in her life, but she, yeah, so we're friends. I tell people like, oh, so people like they forget what I did. They do, and they'll say, oh, so you did Rainbow Right? No, <laughs> you did Cabbage Patch? No. <laughs> Let's get this straight. <laughs> what about um Ho Holly Hobby? Holly Hobby was um so <laughs> Holly Hobby was a uh, freelance for American Greetings back in the day, and when I first came in. And they had you pick cards that you liked, the art you liked. And I picked Holly Hobby cards. I liked her work a oh, lot, gosh. a lot. And her name is Holly, and her husband's really name is Robbie. So Robbie Hobby and Holly Hobby. Oh, my gosh, that's adorable. Yeah, and <laughs> and so, um, but it was my department uh, under uh, my director, Rex Connors, that decided to do the logo the way it was in Blue Girl and make that more of a licensing phenomenon, a licensing thing. And so it was the first one that actually got licensed, I think, out of American Greetings was Holly Hobby. Care Bears, by the way, was the first one that got licensed before it was anything. It wasn't books. It wasn't cards. It wasn't anything. Why is that? It's just a so, concept. So the shortcake, right, which was uh, just a handful of cards and a little bit of giftware out of the company, um, made it so big. By the time Care Bears came along, uh, you know, a year later, they had faith in it. So it was the first thing that was made to go licensing and not anything else. It was to go licensing. So we asked before any of the other, um, as far as I know, before, because I mean, Mickey Mouse was the, car the cartoon and everything else spun off of, you know, another kind of product, but not Care Bears. Hmm. Care Bears born to take the world by storm <laughs> from every <laughs> angle. Uh. Yeah, absolutely. They were, and it's like, hey, it's a good thing, you know, it's good. 
I mean, my favorite is um, Sunshine Bear. Oh, so cute. <laughs> oh, and he's a bang. Yeah, he's um, yeah, he's saving my money for my studio, so I'm building a separate studio. Oh, cool. I'm building a tiny little studio, uh, all of um, 450 square feet, and uh, it's going to be on Main Street in Beggs, Oklahoma, population 1,200. <laughs> My family going, Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to be able to do this. I'm, I'm making it happen. And yeah. It's like, I'm city girl. I'm going to keep my house in Tulsa. So I'll be city girl, country mouse. And I'll have to find a driver. Somebody who's willing to drive Miss Crazy back and forth. But we'll see. <laughs> There's problems to solve. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, but it's my dream. Will I live long enough to see it done? I don't know. Oh, you will. I don't know. I mean, my time is, um, people like, well, you never know when something's going to get you. I said, yeah, but I have a certain number of years (laughs) ahead of me that I know that I'm in the last one fifth of my life. (laughs) It's true. It's true. I'm people, I'm as old as people's grandmas. Then they asked me, could they, could I be their grandma? Mm -hmm. No. (laughs) <laughs> I will be your eccentric great aunt Muriel. Okay. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Everyone needs one of those. Like, you know, the, I'm not a grandma. My my kids don't have kids, so it's like I'm I'm the piker of the family. I don't have grandkids, but I don't care. I have forty. Oh my gosh, like forty five great grand nephews and nieces. I don't get to see them, but it's okay. I'm yeah. okay. I see them, you know, win wards or whatever on Facebook. Mm. So, so the, when I first moved down to Oklahoma, they go like, "You're not from around here, are you?" And I'm not. You're not from around these parts. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm with these people now. Now for many years now, since '95, mm-hmm. I'm with these the Oklahomans, and I'm not going back. Just <laughs> whatever. I'm with boot makers down in the leather shop. It's all interesting. So, any more questions? <laughs> yeah. I think, of course. Just, I think just a couple more. Okay. So you talked about having a studio. A studio. What does it mean to you to continue being a working artist? Do you think you is it something you can ever retire from, or is it a no. calling? No, I don't think you. I don't think you retire from art. I did. No. Um, not, you're an artist until you delete it or erased, but otherwise. Um, I've written a poem about having graphite in my veins from all my drawing I've done. Oh, I like that. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's like, um, no, I don't. I mean, it's like you, I thought I was retired. Uh, and even then, I thought, what am I going to do? And I taught myself uh, 3D, 3D rendering and 3D animation. And I taught myself after I was officially retired. Wow. wow. I'm impressed. And I taught myself, and and it was like a an inexpensive program. It was a real, it's really good, but it's written by a German who doesn't want to explain anything to you. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you do that? And go, oh, it's easy. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and so it felt like going back to kindergarten, and it was really intensive, and I really liked it. And I created a character called Little Iffy. <laughs> she's, she's never quite sure of herself. No, <laughs> but she has friends. So she has Shirley, Shirley, frankly, and maybe they're all her friends. I can't help it. I just, I just create groups like that. Um, my latest um, shortcake light character. We're going to say it's not really part of the program, but I felt that um, somebody had taken a strawberry shortcake clothes and put it on orange blossom. So it's a black character with strawberry shortcake clothes. And I thought, you know what? That's not fair. It should be a, a shortcake theme black character. And so I did one. This is recent. Uh, Frise, and I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's French, um, meaning strawberry, F-R-I-E-Z-I-E-S-E. Frise um, parfait. Oh, cool. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah. I love that. So she has, instead of that big fluffy hat, she's got a fascinator hat. That's a strawberry that has little hearts that are gems on the hats. And she has braids 
beautiful braids because I have a friend, Kimberly Queen, in town that is like, she does braids like nobody else in town. So for in black hair. So she has the braids and she has, does not have a cat. She has a um, strawberry finch. Oh, ooh, I like it. That's awesome. It, there actually is a strawberry finch. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> So the thing is that she loves it and she's a dancer. So she's a dancer and so she has strawberry shortcake, um, strawberry of speakers. <laughs> and then and then if the speakers aren't working for some reason, the Wi-Fi is down, who knows? Um, uh, her strawberry finch knows all the music. Oh, and cool. I, I, I can't do stuff without, you know, making stories. They just happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, nobody likes just a picture without a story. Well, I mean, somebody does. I'm sure there's somebody. <laughs> Maybe one or two people, but. <laughs> people, some people think that somehow, and this is the, another point I try to get through to people, that a realistic portrait is like this fabulous piece of fine art. And it's like, and I said, you know what? I can do realistic portraits, by the way. However, so can a camera. <laughs> and what I do is not what a camera can do. It is right. not. And it takes longer for me to develop a character than for me to do a portrait of somebody. Yeah, so I, I don't it. I don't do portraits um anymore. I did so I the guy that runs the um leather shop and he's an artisan and everything, and he said, um when I first came down, like, oh, I'd like you to do a portrait of me. It's like, okay, whatever. And I tried, and I just was not working for me. It just wasn't right. So I made him a character. So he goes by, um, his name is Roger, but he goes by the name of Troll. So I, I said, um, I did the character. I called it Sweet Troll. Sweet Troll. Oh. So. <laughs> I love it. Mm, me too. But it made him cry. When he saw it, it's like, oh, oh my gosh, oh, oh. I cried. It's like, oh my. So then I made him a, a sweet troll for our Christmas. I made him Santa because I play, I play Ms. Claus in the Jingle Day Parade. Sure. Mm -hmm. get, get up there on that fire truck, right? Oh, how cool. Oh my gosh, how fun. Yeah. <laughs> if only it's the like, people knew. <laughs> they did, you know, it's like, I get up on that truck and it's like read it really right after my stroke. I mean, really the year of my stroke. And then I'm climbing on this huge fire truck like, OK, I'm, okay. <laughs> Make I'm kids fine. Stuff. Really, I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm fine. And it's like I don't know if you've ever, you know, climbed up a ladder, up a truck, it's a fire truck. It's just straight up. And and the steps are quite a distance apart. And I'm still five foot tall. So it's right. something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm one yeah. crazy woman. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to see your creations in a second, third and fourth reincarnations? Sorry. Chris. I know. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was somebody recently and she's really using um, she's really working for the copywriter and she's done some sculpting of um, strawberry shortcake. And I guess, you know, she's doing for the licensing. She's doing a beautiful job. So it was one of the few that I like, wow. That is, but it's off the classic. So I still go back to the classic. If somebody wants me to sign one of the, um, I call them, just between you and I, the flying saucer ones, you know, big hats. Like this. Like, <laughs> I don't say that's not mine. OK, yes, it came from my original stuff. It's a it's a fallacy, but I, it's not mine. And so, um, sure, I'm always going to like what I did. Uh, I've done new versions of them, but in different situations because I felt like it. Because, like, how would I draw today? It was kind of a challenge to myself. If I have to draw a lemon meringue. How would I draw today? And um, I was in California and my son had a big lemon tree and. Um, for a souvenir to bring back to Oklahoma, I brought lemons back for that, and I was making lemon curd. So then I had made lemon meringue making lemon curd just for the fun of it, and the drawing turned out really nice. 
So then I've done a uh, blueberry muffin in her own kitchen, right? I've made up the kitchen, what it is. And I've done, uh, let me see, who else did I do? I didn't do raspberry. I did um, apple dumpling uh, under an apple tree. And um, so I sold all the original drawings of those. And then I sold, um, they're all um, limited edition of 50. I don't do more than 50 in a limited edition. That way people, and some people will buy one of each, you know, they'll buy the whole kit and caboodle. I think they're smart. The drawings have gone up in value. The original drawings have gone up in value that I've done. I put them up. Somebody said, you should put them up in auction. I said, I don't know if I really want to do that. Whatever. And I thought, okay. Put it up for auction. It went for $580. Who knows from there? I don't know. All I really want to do is all these 15,000 people on my Instagram. I would like them all to give me $2. <laughs> We're going to make it happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody says, Ellen DeGeneres should have you on the show and do your dancing. And it's like, yeah, no, right. she hasn't found me yet. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be a good guest, don't you think? Oh, for sure. Yeah. You got one season left to get on there. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Be the last one. <laughs> right. Oh, that'd be cool. There's, I'm not going after that. You know, there's things people, <laughs> people say, I might think what, what I should do, what you should do, you should do this, you know, whatever the, the I said, excuse me, should is not in my vocab. <laughs> not in my list. Of it's either I need to do it. Or I don't need to do it. There's no should. <laughs> don't should me. <laughs> Mm-mm, no. no. Have you seen the new action figures they're coming out with? Of strawberry mm-hmm. shortcake? No, I'm probably good. Yeah, oh. they're they're really cute. They're they're very they're very they use the original designs, but they're like a an action figure. I I bet I bet that's what I saw. I bet that that's what that one woman sculpted, and she is so good. I was thinking I was, that too. Yeah, I was wondering if that was probably the ones you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, I bet I didn't. Use, people will point things out to me and. And I'll go look. I'll have a peek, and um, then decide if I want to. And I will comment on people's stuff, but only in a nice way. Or don't, you know? It's like somebody has their baby, and you go, "You want to be nice. You want to see that baby's cute." If yeah. You can't say it's cute. You say, "Oh, that's an interesting baby." But you know, you don't, you don't go on any further than that. As the same thing people are. You don't. You just find the positive things, and that's what I do. So her stuff, I really liked a lot. Um, and there's a few other people that have done shortcake like stuff that I really like uh, their work, but I don't really necessarily follow it. So thanks for the for the interview. Um, yeah. Any more questions or you know whatever? I think we've uh, done this. Yeah. I I just want to let people have you let people know um, where they can find you and more of your work. Well, it's um, the easiest one is out of thin air. So O U T T A thin air studio dot com. And that's where my work is. And the same thing goes go out of thin air. You'll find me on Instagram. Um, my Facebook is you can follow me on my Facebook, but I'm not I don't let everybody on my Facebook and I'm on TikTok, but only minimally on TikTok. It's just for the dancing kind of <laughs> yeah. this is what i said to people when it first it was pretty bad back in the day right so when i was on earlier and i said well i've determined the average age it's female and they're 23 and a half years old or horny t- truck drivers that's, that's oh. and i did a whole little thing on it and it was just and then i was out of there <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So, yeah, well, any I mean, plans I'm a, for a, any plans for a book or to sell some more of your work? Well, I'm going to sell the, I'm going to do the book with uh, strawberry. It's, I call it, I call it shortcake and me is what I call it. Um, I love that. Me too. I love yeah. that title. Yeah. I call her shortcake. Like why call her strawberry? Or anything? It's like you call her shortcake, shortcake and me. And so I am working on it. I'm going to have somebody here locally, um, print it for me not gonna be a big one but um so that's my plan for that i don't i have a big meet and greet in june uh three days 
uh, SoonerCon, the biggest one in it's bigger, biggest one in Oklahoma. Uh, and uh, and then I'll do another one at Ida Red if they want me to, because Ida Red is just a fabulous gift store in town, and she just likes to party and she she does a beautiful job. So if I do another one, that's it. I'm gonna mm-hmm. try to um, slow down a little bit. <laughs> Well, I can't wait for the book personally. Me too. Okay. And, and I and I totally want to know when it comes out so that we can spread the word for you. Uh, oh, I would love that. Oh, and then somebody else is doing a book uh, on me. A photographer came to, like, she begged me to come to the house so she could do photographs when she's professional. I don't really know her very much, but I said, okay, eventually I gave in. I said, oh, okay. It's kind of like you guys. Like, oh. So anyway. <laughs> I, I eventually I said, okay. I said, but you have to come the day after I have somebody come and clean it, which is like once a month. I have it. Somebody come. <laughs> yeah. And I said, the day after she comes to the house and I said, and I'm not staying sitting still. So you have to catch me moving. Mm-hmm. I like it. <laughs> and, and so, cause I look younger if I'm moving. So I wish I'm moving and she took all these really wonderful photos Oh my God! But she hasn't published it yet, so she's going to put it together in a book. Um, pictures is a it's a collaboration of myself and herself, so that'll be out I think this summer. Oh, oh awesome. awesome! All right, we're going to keep an eye out for that too. Said, but do you want it? You talk talk about the shortcake and how you did the shortcake, because maybe your fans would. Work. I said no, 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 no. We're just going to do this. You're just going to do it with your. She writes poetry. Put your poetry in the photos. I don't care. I don't care. I mean, she cares that it makes money for me, but it's like. Right. (laughs) I got other things, you know, it'll be okay. It's all going to be okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a total pleasure talking with you and hearing about all your great stories and view of the world and art and strawberry shortcake and Care Bears and just what an amazing person you are and thank you so mm-hmm. much for being here yeah, you guys been you. great you're only as good as interview as, as as your interviewer that's what i always say too so good job it's true well thank you so much all and right we will we're looking forward to the book and we'll let you know when the episode is up and published okay. all right here we go all right all <laughs> thank right. you so much muriel well, thank you Once again, we can't thank Muriel enough for joining us for this episode of What a Doll, the podcast all about dolls and the people who love them. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe on your favorite podcast network, or leave us a rating or review. It really helps our discoverability. And until next time, keep living that plastic, fantastic life. Bye, everyone.